If you've been collecting Lego for quite some time, there is a good, good chance that you've got quite a few of these brick separators in your collection. Well, there's actually quite a bit you can do with these, and some of these you might not have thought of before. Stick right to the end for a very, very, well, let's say controversial use for the brick separator that I definitely don't recommend trying at home. But of course, first up, you can use it as a brick separator this is of course the most obvious way if you end up having two parts that you can't remove by hand without using your teeth your nails in order to preserve the lego you just clip the brick separator on the pieces pop it back and now you've got the piece that you wanted but that is only the first use for brick separators you can also use the axle to push out axles such as the ones keeping the wings together in the recent Coruscant gunship and that goes for all other Technic models. If there is a pin that you can't pull out, you can use this to pop the pin out. It really is good if you're building with Technic. You can also remove plates from the underside with the top of it and this nice long bit here not only has a bit of grip for your hand or more particularly your thumb, but it also allows you to glide it along any plates or base plates and remove a bunch of tiles with ease and even pop off certain pieces that have a nice groove underneath. As I said, it's not the only use. You can use this to pop off tiles or you can also pop off your 3D prints when you are done. You all know by now I do have a 3D printer. I have 3D printed Karma's pauldrons for my clones and in fact this whole display is itself 3D printed. Now once a print is done the bed of the printer is still a bit hot and you might need a little bit of force to lift the design off of the printer. Now most printers come with a metal scraper and that tends to last the course of the printer if not even longer than the printer itself but if for some reason you've misplaced it I'm always misplacing mine. You can grab a 3D printer and as long as the base isn't too important to you because there's a chance that this might dishape the base of the printer, but it does work in getting your prints off. As a quick tip, sometimes the brick separators do get a bit bumpy after they've been used for a while, but you can just sand it down and then it's smooth and good to go. Of course, be careful when you are sanding down your brick separator, it is plastic. Plastic shards could pop off and it's going to make a ton of mess, so don't do this near your LEGO collections. It's a way to keep using your brick separators even after they've gone a bit rough around the edges because you're not going to want a bunch of brick separators for the top though if you do line up brick separators you can remove pretty much any lego plate they have made all you've got to do is line up for a 4x4 for instance you can get three of these on the side one stud on the two edge ones one in the middle pop it off and it makes it look as easy as popping off a 2x2 two two with one of these now i mentioned 3d printing and i have actually 3d printed a hammer you've probably seen this by now the short was very very popular and i've probably included it in the thumbnail all i've done is printed a case for two of these brick separators and a nice TPU hammerhead which is a flexible rubber that Lego are known for using for their capes such as the Doctor Strange cape and now the new Batman Thor and how long is it before we get Karmas and Pauldrons in this material but it is a really nice material it doesn't damage the Lego bricks so once you're trying to put down your Lego you just give it a few taps it helps when you're building larger mocks because it stops you pressing down with your thumbs and fingers and just stops your hands aching so soon it also has the towel of the usual brick separator so you can just glide it along and it works like a hammer instead of removing nails you're just removing tiles and plates with the groove on the bottom and then we've still got the axle at the bottom and the two studs for popping off certain plates of course it's a bigger model so I always keep a regular brick separator handy because you never know when you're going to need to get into them tight spaces. You may also recognize brick separators look like something else and that something else is door stops. Now they're not quite as angled enough but that initial angle should provide enough for most gaps underneath doors unless you have quite a big gap in which case you'll probably need to whack a brick or something underneath it or perhaps a slope would even work. And just as an example of what I mean I do have a 2x3 slope, you can connect it to the bottom and it does sort of adjust per door and then when you're laying it down underneath your door you can see it forms a nice triangle that will wedge your door 
open, shut. It will help to keep it shut if your door doesn't tend to stay shut and it might not have been built to a higher standard. And also it helps keep the door open, especially now the summer's coming. It's gonna get a bit windy and if you do want to keep your windows open and don't have a door stop, look to your Lego collection. You probably have just as many of these as I do and that means you've got enough to spare one for your door. Something you may not have thought of and I haven't seen this used so far, so I will try to implement this at some point, but many people put faces on their brick separators. I have three here and you can use these in your mock building. Now, Star Wars is known to have many different species, many different characters, and why should a brick separator not be included? I mean, they cameoed E.T. in the prequels. I'd love to see someone put a few brick separators as characters in their mocks. And also, you can give them eyes. If you give them eyes on the backside and add a little plate there, you can have a moving mouth too. But it's definitely something I'm going to look to do in the future because, as you saw with the doorstop, all you need is a two by a plate brick, really anything. Not anything, a tile wouldn't work, but anything other than a tile. And you can stand this up and have a whole new species in your mock. I've never learned to use chopsticks, but if you know how to use chopsticks, there's a good chance you could probably use two Lego brick separators as chopsticks. Now, I have no idea how you'd go about them, but they sort of work. So if you've misplaced your chopsticks, perhaps they just broke while you're enjoying your meal. You can pick up two brick separators and try to use them instead. I really do hope this works as I have no idea how to use chopsticks and hopefully I can get a clip of me trying to use these for the video. I've already mentioned about using these in mocks but you can also just display them by itself. If you have any sort of wall display I know you can get Lego compatible tape that does stick to your walls. You can just display all your brick separators. Likewise you can even get a display unit just for your bricks. I used to have a memory box with all my brick separators on, only a small one, until I nearly filled it up and I just didn't have anywhere to put it. But you can definitely whack these in some sort of memory box. If you can find one that's two studs wide, that would be perfect. And just keep a collection, perhaps cut a hole in the top, keep a collection of your brick separators. I think that's a pretty cool display. But I instead keep mine in a tin and I've actually filled it up. So I have a few outside of this which is why I have projects like the hammer to make use of my other ones. But you can see it does look pretty cool. I don't think I'm necessarily going to be showing this off when everyone comes around unless someone asks to see my brick separator collection. But I do think it looks really, really cool. These are all in pristine edition. I guess they're not exactly new as they've all been unboxed, but they come out of the box, they go straight in the tin. And I think it does look pretty cool, but I do have to say, Lego gives out a lot of these brick separators. Now, something I hope you've been thinking of, because I do think more people should use this, is using their brick separator to apply stickers. London Bridge Bricks has a ton of shorts of him applying stickers, and if you couldn't tell, it's just so, so much easier. It really is. It not only allows you to see the sticker as you place it down, you can see the full sticker and it enables you to keep the sticker equidistant from each edge. That's just keeping the sticker the same distance from every single edge. But it also stops any oils from your hands reacting with the adhesive on the sticker and means your stickers are gonna last a long, long time. Of course, you can always put on a glove and try to do it yourself but the best tools are sometimes right in front of you. Speaking of right in front of you, the end of a brick separator not only is used to take plates and bricks off of models, but also to put them on models. You see, if you're trying to put a brick in a small gap and you've got a hand like mine, massive, then you're gonna struggle getting it through certain doorways or little arches, but you've got the perfect tool right in front of you. You see, to get a brick or plate through this smaller gap, I could probably just get the tips of my fingers, but this gives me an extra few inches to reach in and use the brick separator to place down. If you need a bit more strength in the top of the brick separator, you can even push it down with another brick separator. So hopefully some of these have helped you. And I did say there was one more that I do not recommend. The other day we were touching up some paint around the room and I decided to grab this very brick separator right here and try to open the paint can. As you can see, the brick separator is still functional. It is very, very rough around the edges compared to what it used to be. And eventually, 
after trying for only a few minutes I managed off camera to pop off the lid of the first paint pot so I wasn't very happy that I did it off camera but hopefully you can tell how I tried to open it and I did the same with the second pot and managed again to open it I was almost certain the brick separator was doomed halfway through the noises coming from that paint pot were not natural at all I recommend using a screwdriver or whatever other tools especially some sturdy metal ones rather than some PLA plastic that I don't think should be used with them forces but I managed to do it not only once but twice so if you do ever lose your screwdriver and want to open a paint pot go out and buy another screwdriver I don't recommend using it but it can be used to open paint pots if do be sure to drop a like on this video if you did end up enjoying and subscribe on your way out and may the bricks be with you always